form of uh, <coughs> communication style to the one that we uh, typically see within our within our politics. And so one way of looking at it uh, is kind of these three different ways in which we communicate. So the first and the one that we see most often within democracy is the debate kind of mode of communication. And the, the goal of debating is to beat down your uh, opponent and to win the argument. So it's a really, uh, it's a very kind of adversarial form of communication. It's about you coming out on the top in, in the specific kind of issue that you're talking about. The second uh, level is, uh, is the idea of dialogue. So rather than the objective being about winning, the objective is actually about understanding. So it's about having a, commu uh, having a conversation in a way that you can explore each other's point of view, understand kind of where you're in agreement, where you're in disagreement, and kind of leave the conversation with a much better understanding of what the other person thinks, um, uh, as well as your own view. The third level uh, is around deliberation, and kind of deliberation takes the idea of dialogue, but it takes it one step further uh, to being about kind of weighing up different options. So it's kind of it's dialogue for a purpose, I guess I'd, I'd uh, say. So it's about kind of thinking through the different options that are on the table around a particular issue. So I guess big, big thing. Uh, I guess big issue at the moment, uh, Brexit. So. Uh, what are the different options? How do we explore them together? What are the trade-offs that need to be made uh, on those different options? Sort of how, uh, what are our values and kind of what are the principles that we want to apply to the decision? So it's all of these sorts of uh, things that help us to uh, to kind of do that balancing of, uh, uh, of different opinions in a way that we can then, uh, if possible, find consensus. If not possible, then at least understand where different people are coming from. And, uh, and find a common uh, path together. So at its simplest, this kind of deliberative democracy is about there being more opportunities for people in society, in politics, to, to have that kind of dialogue and deliberation in a way that we can understand each other's views, we're not kind of talking past one another, uh, but then we can also transform that into, uh, into decisions that uh, really kind of generally weigh up the different options on the table in a constructive way. So it's kind of it's constructive rather than kind of adversarial form of communication. So um, this guy is uh, is Robert Dahl, and uh, he kind of kicks off this idea of um, mini publics back in the I think he first started talking about them in the nineteen seventies possibly, uh, but. Um, uh, I think his, his seminal book is um, Democracy and Its Critics, which was around, kind of, I think, the late 80s. Uh, but he essentially put forward this idea that as, as a response to, to some of the criticisms of democracy at the time, so I guess we're not, nothing new in terms of, uh, uh, at the moment, democracy coming under uh, critique, um, but he thought that uh, uh, one response to that would be to, to take uh, what he called mini populaces, and which are now typically called today mini publics, term some people might have heard, is the idea of if you can uh, boil down, I guess, the whole population into a group of people that you can fit in one room that kind of represents the kind of diversity and uh, demography of um, of the wider population, then you can have a, like a serious kind of conversation uh, and deliberation about things. So the way that, I guess, deliberative democracy is often practiced is in this idea of kind of mini-publics. So it's bringing together kind of groups of the public that are intended to kind of, I guess, be uh, kind of demographically representative of the wider population. And they're given the time to deliberate on, on an issue in an informed manner uh, to reach a, a set of conclusions. So. So there are lots of these different kind of forms of what are called mini publics around. So the ones that you might have uh, heard most about are citizens' juries. So it orig originated from the, uh, the US in the, the 1980s. Uh, there are planning cells, which originated at a very similar time, actually, in Germany. And it's actually quite interesting that the two people weren't originally talking to each other, but the two ideas were very similar and merged at almost exactly the same time, which um, is... Uh, quite a coincidence, but, um, but essentially it's that idea of kind of taking a, 
uh, a random selected group of the public in a similar way to a criminal jury, uh, but to deal with a, a public policy issue. Uh, then we had consensus conferences, came out of Denmark in the, uh, again, towards the end of the 80s, I think, beginning of the 90s, particularly to look around on science and technology issues. We've had things like deliberative polls. Uh, there's a guy called um, uh, James Fishkin from uh, Stanford University has pioneered these around the world. And, uh, and I guess particularly, I guess the newcomer to the, to the party are citizens assemblies. And those are probably the other uh, methods that people have heard most about, particularly because of what's happened in Ireland recently. So these are all, I guess, different varieties, but um, well, they have some common features. So I've already mentioned the first one uh, around random selection. So it's a randomly selected group of the public, a bit like jury service, you're kind of called up to serve on one of these uh, kind of mini publics or citizen assemblies. Uh, the second being around there being kind of evidence and information that's given to the participants. So again, a bit like jury service, but done slightly differently. People uh, have the opportunity to, to hear from the different sides of the argument. They hear from experts. They hear from people with experience of the, the issue. Uh, the next feature is around uh, facilitated dialogues. So there being kind of a, uh, a structured process through which people work through the different ideas and, uh, and kind of, I guess, um, uh, think about what the evidence and what things are, uh, what they've heard means. Also, kind of think about their own values and principles, and then kind of transform those into a sense of uh, of recommendations. And so, these processes often end with some form of collective decision. And depending on the methods, uh, that's done in different ways. So sometimes, something like a deliberative poll at the end, it's a case of just polling people in the room. So deliberative polls typically have maybe. 300, 400 people in the room that go through the process, and the the way they make a decision is the um, kind of set of options given to people at the end. And having heard all the information, they then make a, a selection in kind of a, a, through a, through a poll. Other forms like um, systems juries and systems assemblies are much more kind of dynamic, and it's about kind of reaching joint recommendations around something, and uh, often through some form of kind of consensus building process. So, although this, I guess there's been a, a lot of talk about this, um, I guess particularly in the UK recently with, with Brexit, a lot of interest around system assemblies, uh, but it's kind of, it's an idea that has been going uh, in one shape or, or form around the world since about the 80s, but actually it draws a lot of what it, uh, a lot of ideas from, oh, I that. so just quickly, there are three steps of a, of a deliberative process. So there's that learning phase, there's the deliberation phase where people actually kind of work through both internally, so they, people internally deliberate over what they've heard, but then also work with the with their fellow participants, and then that decision making phase. But um, this is actually quite an ancient idea. So, uh, so this it is a clericarium which was used in ancient Greece. Uh, and this is why uh, this is my holiday snap for me to kind of take a selfie in, in front of it. Because this is kind of this is a bit of democratic history, uh, thousands of year, years old, and it was used in ancient Athens to uh, select people at random to perform uh, public posts. And um, uh, so some of those were kind of I guess um, uh, single decision making posts. Others were uh, being part of kind of committees um, to make pretty big decisions, decisions like whether or not uh, Athens would go to war were made by randomly selected uh, groups of the Athenian uh, citizen, citizenry, which, uh, which at the time were just men, it wasn't slaves, so it was kind of a very, uh, um, it was a, kind of a small pool of people that could have been called up, um, but it was, uh, it was a different method of selecting people. So, so many of these forms actually just, they, they've been around for, for thousands of years actually in one uh, shape or form. So it's not a particularly new idea. So, um, so very quick kind of recap. Um, so 
deliberation can just be about how do we make, uh, how do we have conversations, political conversations, in a way that we can understand each other's views and weigh up the different options and one that's not adversarial. Um, but in its kind of most practice form, it's typically about bringing together randomly selected members of the public to, to learn about an issue, deliberate, and then reach a decision. Typically, that's done face to face. So there have been attempts to do this online, but um, uh, nobody has really yet cracked the kind of how to, to do deliberation online yet. So there are different platforms that kind of use different aspects of the, the deliberative formula, kind of build in a little bit of it. But actually, that whole process of people having the kind of going through that kind of receiving information, deliberating, then making a decision. Um, nobody has really kind of cracked how to, to do that online yet, and it kind of works best, uh, typically works best in the room. Yeah. Can I say very quickly what you do is uh, social media on that, because obviously that does go a long way towards that deliberation, that mass deliberation. I appreciate it doesn't reach a decision, but I just wanted to have a viewpoint on that. So I think social media is, is slightly different in that, um, but I think social media often encourages more the kind of debate way of doing uh, of talking about an issue so um, uh, and there are I guess there are notable exceptions of, of people on social media who are who are there to understand other people's opinions but typically by I think the vast majority of us actually use it just to, to put out our opinion and if somebody comes back with an alternative view then actually often the response isn't to try to understand why they have that view it's often to try to beat them down with your uh, with your own opinions. So I think often social media actually uh, isn't particularly deliberative in the way it's done. There are some um, there are some interesting initiatives to try to make social media a little bit more deliberative. There are thing, there are kind of uh, online platforms that do like argument mapping. So rather than your rather than like a comment thread where people are just kind of chucking in their opinions, um, it, uh, it it encourages people to to think about, I guess, the different arguments that people have already laid out, and you kind of go through a map of these different arguments, and, but then also to um, to offer up your own kind of perspective on an issue in a way that you kind of start to build a really big kind of map of the different views on an issue. Uh, so there are kind of bits of this that do work with, with social media, but it's still a little bit niche. So that is it's kind of quite a quick kind of run through of, uh, of what this <coughs> kind of quite, a, quite big topic is. Got a few minutes now. If there are any kind of reflections, other questions, um, before we kind of kick off into more of the kind of the make a day uh, session. Does anybody have any thoughts or questions? <coughs> Just lots of the chat that's come up. I'm very conscious of people who aren't digitally plugged in, and that's always the thing. We say, oh, we can have a debate and we can make the whole thing happen online and create the software package and everything. But, but how do you represent people that? Just aren't ever going to plug into a computer. People who are not not of that older people, maybe who who aren't going to ever do that. Like my mum, who's never going to be shown into something like that, but her views are completely valid, and she's going to be around for hopefully the next twenty or thirty years. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think that's one of the strengths, actually, of things like system students and system assemblies, because of the selection method for them. You can ensure that there's a really good diversity and kind of range of people in the room. And because it's not self-selecting in the way that's much kind of online and other engagement is, that you um, you do have your mum in the room as well as, <coughs> as, as well as kind of, uh, uh, kind of younger kids and kind of a full range of, of different perspectives. Yeah. Just an open question, really. Um, without a 